Hey, Sophia. I think I mentioned this before, but it's been playing on my mind a lot. I don't think my salary alone is going to cut it with our baby being due soon and all. Will you keep going to the office for as long as you possibly can? Okay, I can do that. It's our first child, and it's always a good thing to have some money saved up just in case something happens. That's right. No one knows what the future might bring. Anything could happen. Like, maybe I might quit my job or something. What? Do you plan on quitting your job? No, 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 I didn't mean it like that. I was just giving an example. I wanted to make the point that no one knows what the future might bring. So we should be prepared for anything. Phew, <laughs> you had me worried there for a sec. <laughs> but if something does happen, the most important thing is that we discuss it between the two of us, right? We're a couple, and I want us to always be there to support and help each other. Sophia! I just got assigned to a business trip scheduled for the week after next. I'm gonna be gone for about two weeks, so I won't be around at home at all. I hope you'll be okay. Wow! He must have been working really hard. Nice going, babe. I don't remember you going on a two-week trip before, though. That's a long one. What's it for? I'm gonna be doing a training course at some rural branch albums. My promotion's pinned on this. There's no way I can get at it. I see. I can't deny that the thought of you not being around for two weeks makes me a little anxious. I know, babe. I'm sorry. It's really important, though, so I can't miss it. I told my boss you're due to give birth this month, and they're willing to be flexible. Worst case scenario, I can always cut it short and drive back, okay? I see. Okay, um, good luck, babe. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for working so hard for our future together. Oh, yeah. There was one more thing. Apparently, this branch of the company is way off deep in the mountains somewhere. My boss said the net infrastructure out there isn't great. So there's a chance the signal might be bad. Just want you to know going forward that it might be difficult for us to contact each other. Oh... Really? Hmm. Okay, no biggie. Just tell me the name of the hotel. At least then I'll be able to get through to someone, just in case something does happen and I can't contact you. The name of the hotel? Um... Sorry, they haven't told me that yet. Do you, uh, mind if I tell you later? Uh-huh. Um, okay, I understand. Thank you, Tristan. It does mean a lot to me, you know. Anyway, what about you? What about me? How's work going these days? Work? Um, I'd say things are going steadily. We haven't had any real problems to speak of recently. Is that so? You didn't do anything like, well, I don't know, quitting your job without telling me, right? No, of course I didn't. Cool, cool. Well, in that case, I'm pleased. Why would you ask me that? No reason, really. I just had a feeling. I thought you haven't really been talking about work much lately, and it made me wonder. Since you didn't tell me anything, my mind started working overtime, and I was worried you might have quit without saying anything. I'd never do anything like that. We promised we'd always speak to each other whenever anything was bothering us, after all. No matter what. We did? Yes, we did. The time I agreed to keep going to the office till it was no longer possible so we'd have enough money in case of an emergency? Remember now? Oh yeah, that was it. You jogged my memory. Sorry, babe. It just slipped my mind is all. I meant it, you know. If anything's ever troubling you, I want you to know you can talk to me. Meh. Well, you see, the thing is... I'm fine, actually. What does that mean? I'm fine, actually. You mean you don't want to talk to me? It means I can make my own decisions without talking to you. I'm an independent guy. What? That's not what I meant. 
I mean, think about what you just asked me. If I went and quit my job without telling you or anything, things would get really difficult for you, right? Which is why it's important for us to talk to each other as a couple, whenever we're not sure how to proceed with something or we're about to make a big decision. Oh, yeah. That does make sense, actually. Okay, sure. You know, stuff like, maybe one of us is having a hard time at work. So we'll discuss the prospect of switching jobs once we find somewhere else to go. Or helping each other look for new companies. Or maybe if one of us had some kind of long-term illness, we discuss taking holidays before taking the plunge and finally quitting to avoid the finances taking major unexpected hits. We can come up with all sorts of solutions if we discuss things and work as a team. Yeah, yeah. We're a couple, so it's not fair if either of us makes major decisions on our own. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that I want us to discuss things before deciding to go ahead with them. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Let's do that from now on, then. We have to be on our A-games now, Tristan. We're gonna have a son to think about very soon. I said I get it! I'll be more careful from now on. Um, Tristan? I just had a phone call from your boss. He said you left something behind at the office? I thought you were on a business trip. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why? My boss calls you? He said he tried calling you countless times, but your phone was switched off. He said he didn't know what else to do because he couldn't get through to you. I see. I've been out of state for a while. That's probably why. So, um, he didn't tell you anything else, did he? Other than I forgot something? Yes, he did, actually. He said that you quit your job. What the hell are you doing, Tristan? Explain yourself. Did something happen at work? Were you in trouble? Stressed? Did you lie about being on a business trip? Fine. Yeah, I lied. I quit my job ages ago. What? It's true? Why didn't you say anything to me? I didn't have a clue. We agreed to speak to each other about things like this, did we not? Maybe we did. But it's not like there was any point in discussing it. I didn't talk to you because I was already 100% dead set on quitting. Nothing you said could have changed that. What? You were 100% dead set? Why? Why did you quit? Talk to me, Tristan. Come on, isn't it obvious, Sophia? There you are, living life on easy mode like some kind of queen. I'm living life on easy mode? What? And there I am, like some sucker, spending most of my time at the office to fund your lavish lifestyle. You do nothing but laze around the house and slack off, saying, You don't feel well. Lazing around and slacking off? I can't believe what I'm hearing. It's not like I choose to feel unwell. Do you think I enjoy being eight months pregnant and barely being able to move? Is it true, though? When a woman's pregnant, she can say she feels unwell even if she doesn't, and she'll suddenly have the whole world bending over backwards to accommodate her laziness. So you can get time off whenever you want. And it's not fair. Taking time off work while heavily pregnant is unfair? Uh, fine, Tristan. How about you give birth to our son instead, then? Believe me, I would if I could. It doesn't seem half bad. You get to take time off work and sit on your backside eating potato chips all day the moment you say you got a headache. Why are you speaking to me like that? Is this what you've secretly thought of me the whole time? Yeah, it is. That's why I quit my job. So things can finally be fair between us. You quit your job so things could be fair? Uh, I don't even understand what that means. And if your business trip was a lie, where the hell are you now? I'm far, far away, deep in the mountains. I bought a house. What? You bought a house? What the heck? I always wanted to live a semi-self-sufficient life in the countryside. 
I saw this as the perfect opportunity, so I took it. Which part of leaving your heavily pregnant wife to get by on her own in the city was the perfect opportunity? I mean, it was the perfect opportunity for you to pay me back for all I've done for you and look after me for a change. You've been living life on easy mode because you're pregnant for a long time. And it's my turn now. Make sure you look after me properly. It's what I'm owed. Look after you? What does that mean? Are you really so desperate to be a cabbage-growing mountain man that you'd throw away our future together? Was the thought of growing old together with me so awful for you? Why did you have to do this now? It's not that I had to do it. Nothing was forcing me. It's because I wanted to. And I wanted to do it now. Besides, there's nothing stopping me lead a simple, self-sufficient, lifelong into old age. <laughs> I'm due to give birth soon. What do you plan on doing about that minor detail? What do you mean, what do I plan on doing? Why don't I have to plan on doing anything? I'm sick of being the one who fixes everything. Then there's the money solution. You do plan on coming back soon, don't you? What are you going to do about your house when you do? Have you even thought this through? That's just the thing. I won't be coming back precisely because I have thought it through. <laughs> I'm gonna be living here forever. This is my little slice of paradise and I don't plan on giving it up. Deal with the money situation yourself. Lord knows I've been providing for you for long enough. Oh yeah, make sure you send me plenty of food deliveries though. Food deliveries? What? You quit your job without saying anything, then you abandon me and your son, then you ask me to send you food deliveries? Are you insane? Of course I'm asking you. It's what's owed to me for all I've done for you. Do you have any idea how hard I've been working to make you happy? To make sure that you never wanted or needed for anything? It's only natural you return the debt of gratitude. The debt of gratitude? There was me thinking we were a couple, when it turns out we were nothing but a business transaction all along. <laughs> How silly of me. Did we not agree we'd both work hard together for each other? I'm not saying I deserve a medal or anything, but you're not the only one who's been working hard, you know? Do you have any idea how much overtime I was doing before it got too difficult? You're the one who wanted us to discuss things as a couple, right? Well, that's why I'm telling you this now. We're disgusted. <laughs> Your salary went down when you started taking days off work. There's a serious indiscrepancy here, and it's not fair. If I'm given 100%, you're given 40. That leaves a gap of 60%, which I expect you to account for. What is this? Is our marriage just a spreadsheet to you? How can you think like this? How can you say such hurtful things? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's got something to do with me being overworked and reaching my mental limit. So much so, that I feel half tempted to take you to court and demand what you owe me in compensation. Ugh, there's no talking to you. I'm done with this. Fine, whatever. I'll send you some food packages. Tell me your address. I'm pleased you came to see things from my perspective quickly. There's a good girl. For now... Make sure you send me enough food and money to get by for a few months. You can send more later. Thanks. Your dad's a farmer, right? This should be good. I can't wait! <laughs> How's work going, Sophia? Can I get a progress update? It's going fine as usual. That's great news. I'm totally dependent on your salary now. So I need you to put on a good show. Oh yeah, thanks for the food packages. They came this morning. <laughs> Five whole boxes! They're absolutely cram full too. That's my girl. <laughs> One thing though, I'm guessing you did it by mistake, but next time, make sure you don't send it payment on delivery, okay? Listen, Tristan, about that. Did you actually look inside the boxes? Nah, not yet. It's food and money, right? 
They're pretty damn heavy, so I don't see what else it could be. I wonder, what could it be? Huh? Wait. No way. Hey! These boxes are full of mud! What the hell do you think you play it at? <laughs> you have no idea how hard it was filling those things up and getting them sent off. <laughs> don't screw me around, Sophia! Where's my money and food? I spent the last of my money on the delivery fee for this goddamn mud! This is serious! <laughs> You're broke and penniless because you bought five boxes of mud? <laughs> you know full well I am! This isn't a joke! Quit laughing at me! Do you really think you're gonna get away with this? You won't be laughing for long! Send me some real food packages, now! You think I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut and obey your ridiculous demands like some kind of slave? <laughs> Besides, surely if you went to the lengths of quitting your job, you must have had some savings put to one side to help you get by for at least a few months. Right? I use all my savings on the house! Even if I don't have any savings, I'd have no problem living off your salary if you sent me regular deliveries of food and money! Wow. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if the world really was that simple? Hmm. There's just one small problem. I have absolutely no obligation to do that whatsoever. What? You owe me a debt of gratitude! You still don't appreciate how hard I work for you, do you? A debt of gratitude? You can spew as much baseless nonsense at me as you like. It doesn't make it true. Actually, any kind of positive sentiment I had towards you completely disappeared when my eyes were opened to your extreme selfishness and arrogance. If you want handouts, how about you go and sponge off your parents instead? Don't be so stupid! I can't tell my parents I quit my job at a time like this! Aha! Uh -huh. So you do have some level of awareness that what you're doing is wrong. Ashamed, are we? Is there a conscience hiding away in there after all? Whatever you do, I'll be going into the hospital for the birth of our son soon. So, as much as it pains me, I'm not going to be able to respond to your messages for a while. Hurry up and send me some stuff before you go in then! Don't make excuses! What would you do if I starved to death? How would you be able to live with yourself? Don't be silly. You'll be fine. Just research which herbs and grasses are safe to eat online before your phone contract gets deactivated. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't already. I would have thought that that would be the first thing on your list as a newly self-sufficient mountain man. <laughs> like hell I can go around eating grass. There are bears around here, you know? If I go around making myself conspicuous, I might not come home. There are bears there? <laughs> oh, surely you should have investigated stuff like this before quitting your job and buying a house. <laughs> they didn't tell me when they gave me the viewing. The guy said the place was safe and I had nothing to worry about. Oh, no. Did you get scammed? Scammed? <laughs> no way! In fact, I got a really good deal on the place. It's an old house that no one was living in. They sold me it so cheap you wouldn't believe. You're probably jealous, huh? Has it not occurred to you that the reason it was so cheap is because there are bears everywhere? <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm not interested in talking about your house. The bottom line is whatever you say to me, I won't be sending you food packages. And you won't be getting a cent out of me. Why not? That's not fair! I always wanted to live deep in the mountains. It's been a dream of mine since I was a kid. It's a wife's duty to support her husband's dreams. You must have a few dreams of your own, Sophia. Have you no humanity? Sure, I have dreams. But nothing I want so bad I'd abandon my family over. I asked you before, didn't I? Did you really have to do this now? Isn't that exactly what you're doing by choosing now of all times to do this? Abandoning me and your son? We are your family, Tristan. I have no obligation to look after a husband who'd do something like this to me. 
How can you be so heartless? After all I've done for you, I'd be there at a heartbeat if it was you who was in trouble, Sophia. I'd always come home to help you. Even living here in the mountains, no matter what. It's me who's in trouble, you idiot. I'm about to give birth on my own. How interesting that you're suddenly saying this now, after all this time. After buying yourself a new house to live in completely on your own, and making it abundantly clear you don't care about me, your home is in the mountains now. No! Listen to me! No, I won't. I'm done with you. Deal with your own mess. And don't expect any help from me. Sophia, please! Help me! This is my hour of need! I'm begging you! Could you send me some money at the very least? Forget the food. I could buy my own if I got money. Nope. Oh yeah, when our son's born, I'll be taking him to your parents' place and introducing him. What? No, don't! Why would you want to go to my parents' place without me there? That would just be weird, right? <laughs> of course it would. Don't do that. Please. It'd probably be real awkward for my folks if you went without me. Trust me, they hate stuff like that. Are you a total moron? Me and your parents get along great. We always have. They're so excited to meet their first grandson. Whether you're there or not makes no difference. Ugh, fine. Whatever. Look, just don't tell them anything about me, okay? Just tell them I'm on a long business trip abroad, okay? You can do that for me, right, babe? Right? A business trip abroad? Have you lost your mind? Uh, I have to admit, I am embarrassed at the thought of discussing the fact that my husband is a penniless mountain hermit, so it's not something I'll bring up myself. But if they ask, I intend to answer honestly. No, please wait, Sophia! Will you please just be flexible on this one thing? I need to speak to you about this seriously! The signal's terrible at this house, so I can't discuss it properly right now! I'm gonna run down to the base of the mountain. I'll ring you when I get there, okay? You'll answer, right? There's absolutely nothing to be gained by talking to you. So, while it's unfortunate, allow me to politely refuse your request. Don't say that! Please, I'm begging you! You said it was important to discuss things! Look, I'm sorry I quit my job without telling you and bought a house in the mountains. We're a couple, aren't we, babe? Isn't being a couple all about helping and being there for each other? Oh, I see. The fact that we're a couple is suddenly important to you now that you want something from me? You're the one who told me I need to get by somehow on my own. You're the one who made this marriage no longer about helping each other. Good luck with that self-sufficient mountain man life you've always dreamed of. You should be celebrating, baby. You finally realized your childhood dream. <laughs> no, please. I'm begging you. I've never been this serious about anything. Aha! I got it. Why don't you come and live here with me? It'll be great, baby. Just me, you, and nature. It's perfect. Why didn't I think of it before? You'll come, won't you? Don't forget the bears. Mm, I guess they fall under nature though, huh? <laughs> if you look hard enough, you'll see my answer is already waiting for you. It's in the bottom of one of those mud-filled boxes. It's in the form of the fully filled in divorce papers with my signature on them. Be a darling and get them signed and turned in ASAP. After that, I was admitted to the hospital and gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Tristan's parents came to see me in the hospital after the birth, but they were both shocked to find that their son was nowhere to be seen. When I explained why that was, they were shocked, dismayed and disgusted in equal measure, and apologized profusely. Then, a few days after the birth, while I was still recovering at the hospital, I got a phone call. Apparently, Tristan had been attacked by a bear in the mountains while out foraging for herbs to eat, and he was rushed to the hospital. Fortunately for him, there was no danger to his life. But not so fortunately, he was genuinely broke, with not a cent to his name. He gave the doctor my number, who, not knowing what else to do, gave me a call. 
I still hadn't been discharged from the hospital, so there was no way I could do anything. Tristan's dad was kind enough to rush out to him, though. However, from Tristan's perspective, his dad was probably even more terrifying than the bear. Now that the birth is out of the way and I have my son to look after, all that's left is to wait for the divorce to be finalized. Then, I can finally focus on mine and little Tommy's future.